hero. We're going to make it work. It's a goo goo. The Sagara. Game four. She could come out I again like because it's going to be on Warhead Junction. Zagugu? You've never heard that? Is that what you actually call her? No, I don't call her, but that. there are there are people. Zagugu? Yeah. That is the best name I've ever heard. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of, you know, kind of building your own nickname for every hero, or at least for a few there, and that's one of the better ones I've gotten out of I'm that so one. I'm so surprised you haven't heard that. No, I, I'm honestly a little disappointed with myself. But Warhead Junction, she could come back. She could come back, and hopefully, you know, be as effective as she was into the last game. I'm having a hard time gauging when is Zagara effective now, because in our team fights, again, still not really going, that's the Zagara moment, right? The Baneling's a little bit of poke. Yes, a bit of pressure. But then she's a walking hydralisk, and again, outside of interrupts. So it's just, it's very difficult for me to be able to gauge that there. And again, it's, uh, it's not like this is happening against even in death either. That is Tempo Storm, and they're putting up games. The only thing is, I would be a little scared for Zagara and Abathur together on Warhead Junction. We know how Tempo Storm wants to play this. It's get a boss, take a keep as fast as possible, get a bunch of nukes, next boss, win the game. Game over, we're done with the series. But Tempo also, when they've displayed that kind of strategy, you know, they haven't looked too hot as of late. True. It's so much so that Warhead Junction dropped in priority. Curse Talk, or Dragonshire was the map, and Curse were the two that took place of the Warhead Junction. So yeah. the fact that we've gone back to that for game number four, I feel like it's like, well, you dropped it because it was you were showing that your first thought process to play the map was not necessarily working out, and it was very apparent they didn't want to learn a different one at that point, or at least prioritize learning a different one. Um, well, it makes me wonder, though, if they, they're just trying to dissuade that we'll wait until mid-game. Granted, Black Force did okay in the early game. They kept up with Tempo Storm, yeah. even with an Abathur and Zagara. And it's partially that they had the Zagara. They limited uh, the amount of times that Falstad and Genji could get Zagara picks. So we'll see if they want to do it again here in Warhead Junction. We got to have ETC with this kind of music, right? I was just thinking, listen to those sweet guitar riffs. What's your honor with this fall under? <laughs> no, seriously, though. If you were to just label it. Funk. Just is this like town. a funk alternative or something? I don't know. It's just got a nice swing to it. I don't even know how you begin dancing to it. Granted, I mean this isn't the only genre I struggle with that problem, but <laughs> it, it seems like it would be harder than the rest of them. I think it's maybe funk or rock. I feel I, like it's very 80s though, right? You hear what you think would be I hear guitar the electric riff. Keyboard is like is like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know that guy's got four keyboards, and he's smacking all of them. Like you, and you're just sitting there, like in awe. You're like, how can his hands move that fast? Yeah, and the whole time he's not looking at you. Yeah, that's him. Twenty seconds left in the Black <laughs> Force. Like, What's happened in the draft so far? Nada. Good job, to us. We're golden. Thank you, Black Force. Everybody <laughs> needed to hear a bit more about the guitar riffs. Genji's gonna be the ban. What about Abby though? Abathur is decentivized as a ban for Tempo Storm, considering the Genji was removed, but by no means is it a poor ban. Illidan still remains, and it turns out he's really good at that core concept you were talking about before. You know what this means? There is either going to be an Abathur Task Tracer or a Medivh available. Or so Tempo are going to make sure that they can get some of that, too. A Zagara first ban. When everything is left out on the table, who comes out on top, Gilly? Do you have an answer? I think it's Abathur. I think Abathur remains at top. I don't know if Lagforce does. I personally do. I, I know. It decentifies. Over okay. Task Tracer. Over, so here's the thing. If you leave the Task Tracer, Tempo 100% has a 1-2 that, which leads to a lot of counterplay. You have 1-2, ban, all to be able to manipulate this. what else is remaining for the roster of Tempo Storm. They disagree. They're going to go with the Task. High risk here to, uh, for the members of Lagforce. But it does leave Abathur up. <clears throat> Have we seen Abathur for Tempo Storm when they're playing their general style strategy of Warhead Junction? It seems sort of too slow for them. It does seem a bit too slow for them. But I also feel like it's, there's no way, I just feel like there's no way we see the exact same team of Tempo Storm on Warhead here. They it's did just, do it with Zeratul. They did? Mm -hmm. You're right. superstars. When we got the wild Zeratul, I just wanted to highlight the fact that Temple Storm is also second guessing once the math problem gets opened up. Nobody removes the standards. What is truly the best? Isn't that kind of a little funny 
situation. Everybody can agree that certain things are broken, but when nobody bans either one, everybody's like, oh, where do we go? And it's mainly because if you mess up, then the, it's very high risk, and your odds of like, oh, I misstep, and then you lose a draft yeah. are a lot higher. But it is funny how like it seems like it would be faster because there's a math problem, and it's all solved already. Illidan returns for Tempo Storm. So apparently it's we only get Illidan when everything strong is left up. That's your answer. Illidan always was a primary pick for Tempo Storm on Warhead, and then the only other place where they would play it sometimes was Battlefield of Eternity. You know, Illidan seems like a pretty hard Cairo to like counter. Can you name, I don't know, just like, give me three characters that you might be able to, never mind, I was going to have you say <laughs> Tracer and Arthas. And Brightwing. Or and Brightwing. Arthas yeah. and too. I was, and I was going to say, like, how many of those do we see picked up on the other side of the table? Mainly the Tracer is what I wanted to talk about. Because why you, when you gave me the stank eye when I said I want the Abathur sitting at the top, why the Abathur sits above all the rest is because Abathur synergizes with the Illidan composition and Task Tracer, when it commits to it, its play style is pretty linear. And more importantly is the fact that Tracer counters the Illidan. So I want to have the Abathur to make up for that, to be able to deal with it a little bit more, get that split pressure outward. It's just Abathur is a bit more generic, and more importantly, I don't want to deal with the Task Tracer into my Illidan. I know what what you're doing is like most optimal, but you're forgetting that it's Lag Force who has Task Tracer. Okay. It is Lag Force. My boy Biggie. Yes. He's going to come in. He's going to do the pew pew. Yes. Hopefully Temple Storm's going to be QQ. Abathur's banned and now out. And now they can ban Abathur. If I'm Tempo Storm, I'm saying a big old win there. You, okay. you, you ban the one thing that I was like, I essentially got a free ban by picking in that order and you not committing. I got something for free. So now okay. I should be able to utilize it with my two three or with my three four. Excuse me. I don't feel like there's a right or wrong. It's just more of teach their own. I feel like honestly though we should do a better job of taking sides here and have a battle over the draft and why I did better than you and you did better than me because I feel like that would be a good time up until somebody gets a black eye but it, until then it would be enjoyable. All fun and games. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, Temple Storm has next two picks. They, man, I can't believe that Dahaka has made it all the way through here in Warhead, but Greymane is still up. Greymane is a possible. Arthas, what is what I'm feeling for Tempo? Warrior or uh, boss killer. Grimmin. And Dahaka. Dahaka. I didn't think they would go with the Dahaka, considering they already have that Illidan. I didn't think it'd be Dahaka either. That's a really interesting pickup. It's just a bit more counterintuitive towards their rules and their ideal goal. I still feel like that last pick has to be the Arthas, but I thought it would be the Arthas there to decentivize the solo Arthas with the Tassadar and a Brightwing uh, to be able to back him. So what do we see for Lag Force? What do you what do you want? ETC yeah, we're waiting tutorial. on a B-Kid and uh, Leon Black. That's his name, right? That is his name. There's no Malthale. They've taken the Haka. Ah, they're focusing on B-Kid. But Arthas is still up. Does he take? Arthas ETC. All day. You got to take the Arthas, right? Arthas is a must. Uh, Arthas, yes. But does he take... Leoric? That's oh. what I was wondering about. Does he get Leo? You already know his hero pool. Two, three games deep, and you've got Leon Black's. Never mind. That wasn't Leon Black's pick. That was B Kid's pick. Oh. Leo. But we also know Leon Black because we got stitches again. All right. Now I'm struggling to gauge how much of this actually is the objective measure, you know, that you were talking about before, and how much is it the lag force factor in. More importantly, playing with a sub, being zuna -less here uh, when it comes to their drafting because the Task Tracer and the Brightwing, up until really the last rotation, it did seem normal for yep. Lag Force. Tempo still has their last pick. What is it? I still like the Tyrael. I, it just I like Tyrael too. It might be a new Barak if they want to have another escape versus Stitches. They can cocoon to make sure that he can't gorge somebody. Arthas isn't terrible either to enable the Illidan to be a little bit more effective. Mm -hmm. uh, Stitches is immobile, and you can punish his lack of mobility pretty effectively with the Frozen Tempest or Mosh Pits or a double support. Snaps. Oh, baby. Double support, quote, unquote, no warrior. We've got a Dahaka. He is a warrior, yeah. but sort of not really a primary warrior like you'd expect. 
You know what's funny is, in the back of my mind, I was kind of like, are they going to just do something weird here? Because every once in a while, it feels like Tempo Storm will bring out this no standard warrior, no like primary warrior. They yeah. did it with Dahaka Chin another time. And it generally is on Warhead Junction. And you know who did that to my Warhead first? E-Star. <laughs> Get some. As you can tell, Gilly's an E-Star fan. Just a little bit. I'm more just pay respects. second. <laughs> pay respects, dude. I'm more sitting here thinking about the thought process, like into the double warrior tracer only backline. I mean, let's be real here. Damage has got to be a concern for the members of Neventic. But then they go into the Lucio double support to make sure killing is even more of a problem and Tracer being able to lock down the kills. But it still just doesn't feel, you know, that synergistic with the remainder of the composition. And I don't know if maybe double support was even necessary to deter that. So it just feels like there's more to this than I'm seeing at first glance because it's not the deal with Tracer and Tassadar and Brightwing death balls. It's more... They, I feel like they're onto something. They've got at least a unique strategy for a map like Warhead Junction. There's definitely a trend emerging about shielding against percent-based damage. Yeah. Uh, it started with Mouth Ale, and we saw that with Lucio. Now they're using it even though there's not a Mouth Ale with uh, Tracer because she gets Quantum Spike at 10. We'll see how it works out for Tempo Storm and if they can close out this series on their Warhead Junction game with just a blip in Game 3. With just a blip is the goal here for Tempo Storm. Level one talents seem to be the norm for both sides. And we can expect laning to look like for the members of Lag Force to have Task Tracer, especially the Tracer, off doing her own thing, looking for kills under the side lane. Brightwing doesn't want to be on her own lane. She'll hang out temporarily and just teleport whenever she needs to be able to get a gank or counter that gank. And so I'm assuming we see our situation where Tassadar is stuck through mid. Yeah, it's going to be mid. And then actually they're transitioning Brightwing towards bottom for now. But we know that she's going to be the one give it up. You either leave it to where Brightwing is the sustain to help the Tracer, or you leave Tass. And they choose to go with the Tassadar. Interesting selection for the members of Lag Force. Things may change up, though, once they see where all of Tempo Storm is making a stand, because... Temple Storm has a lot of options with how they want to set up their lanes. Tahaka likely to be by himself. Illidan probably by himself too. And then there can be some rotation with Greymane and the double supports, or even a, a support with one of those solo laners. As we see here with Som showing up with Fury, slowing down as Cobb and Luck comes in. They're really hoping to get hook. first blood on Leon Black. No punishment hook back there from Lag Force. Very good rotation from the members of Tempo Storm. And now they're just going to transfer out even farther. It's that is be not fun for June. Yeah, it's not a good time. Neither team necessarily has the most dominant of wave clear. B Kid caught out. Wraith walks used. He's just fine. It's more on the hand of Tempo Storm to dictate the laning phase here because of the Task Tracer. And again, the predictability I was trying to talk about. They, You know what ta Tracer wants to do. She doesn't affect the minion wave. She doesn't siege well. She only is useful ganking around looking for the Pulse Bombs. Man, I'm so surprised that Tempo Storm has been willing to keep Lucio in that bottom lane by himself for this long. I mean, technically he doesn't have anything drained, and it's not like Brightwing's out pressuring too effectively. Well, we've got two Warheads about to deploy in 15 seconds. Brightwing is toward the bottom one, and then there's one in mid. So what's the focus? Temple Storm's going to make sure to get some vision thanks to the Watchtower. But that's not going to affect too much with the Warheads toward the top. This is definitely advantageous for mid for the members of Lag Force and not so much on the bottom though. The one versus one between the supports neither really should win over the other. It's just a stall game more than it is anything. So then when looking towards mid, it's well, there's a teleport. But Psalm is flanking with his Rhaegar. He should still be fine, Thompson, to survive. Maybe not if that boop is there. Enough mobility. Big impacts there. The Polymorph is dropped. And now Idream's there for some shielding. Biggie has a potential Pulse Bomb if he wants to use it. None of the Warheads have been grabbed just yet. A lot of stalling around this mid, even though a lot of rotations have come in from both teams to the bottom Warhead. Coffin goes in. The body blocks on the Leon Black. He's stuck between the members of Tempo. Storm in first blood for Tempo. 
but it comes to a cost there. We see the bottom warhead was picked up by Tomster. Tempo recognized that the best they were going to do is have faster rotations, so they pulled people from Lag Force down and then made rotations back up to the mid. As long as they traded on warheads, they're at least getting an advantage because they got the first kill. You got eyes in the dark for Coffin. Mm -hmm. Level 4 is going to be able to aid with that Brightwing specifically very, very well. It's my favorite talent on Greymane. That's why I just, when I get it, I, I get really excited. There's also Royal Focus, which should make you very excited. It is, you know, and th I am excited about Royal Focus whenever we get it, but I'm going to be honest, we I never get it on small maps where it's like being the problem I want it to be, you know? Warhead, it will have a lot of late game value for the control onto the map, and it's going to stall out to Haka rather effect effectively. Tempo, though, is still doing a pretty good job with their pressure onto the lanes. And Lag Force, we're really just kind of waiting to see when they decide to be fed up with the laning situation that Tempo Storm has provided. Yeah, maybe the Royal Focus is enough for, with Lingering Apparition for Lag Force to feel like they can rotate with everyone else and just have B-Kid taking care of the lanes because it is not incredibly aggressive considering Tracer. I don't think she's used a singular Pulse Bomb yet. Is this a Lust Reverse Amp? Big impact. Recalls. Tomster now maybe regretting that teleport. He drops a Polymorph. I know I could just casually drop that, but I just thought about it for a moment. And wow, Leon Black still, he's just stuck between the members of Tempo Storm. That is part of the downside of Stitches. Hold on. Oh, he gets it. Found himself a June. One for one, though. The end of what could have possibly been the first boss started for Tempo Storm. What do we have at, we've got the nuke being used on the bottom for Lag Force. Focusing in on this bottom oh, lane. Oh, can't also get around. Som, big, Biggie, body blocking to the best of his ability, but Som finally gets away thanks to the help from Cattle. Now Fury stalking in. Doesn't have a drag available though. Idream was able to juke that. Tomster's polymorphs enough, and it looks like these teams are satisfied with what they were able to achieve. Tassadar is going to be backing out, looking for pressure through his camp, actually even walking away from it here, realizing that nobody has the soak throughout mid. This is honestly just Lag Force trying to not let plays happen in the laning phase, a lot of it. And Tempo Storm, with a double support composition, doesn't really have any playmaking capabilities. Why Bloodlust and Reverse Amp? Well, because the reverse, you need somebody to initiate. Otherwise, you have no initiation. You just bloodlust, and they walk away from it with bile, and they go, thanks, nerds. You know what I mean? It's like, thanks for the cooldown. Somebody's got to keep them in place. So who does that? It's not Tahaka. I'm putting my money on the reverse amp Lucio. All if, right. If, if somebody's going to do it, it might as well be him. Three nukes to the one of Lag Force. Thanks again to the stellar macro play, rotations, lane control from Tempo Storm. That is a rough place to be in for Lag Force. They will use the Warhead they did get up in the top lane. So trying to make sure that they're doing equal damage. Oh, it looks like there is still one up. That three must have been that Tempo Storm never used their first one. So it's a it little bit better, but even still there's Tempo Storm have rotated wow. in a way that they have heroic abilities, they have bloodlust. They did still take Sound Barrier. But they picked it before Emerald Wind was chosen. Normally you would wait on that and wait to see the Emerald Wind and then really be comfortable locking it in. Were they in a spot where it looked like maybe they were going to immediately start sieging? Maybe. I don't know. But I can tell you that might be something that they're going to regret if Emerald Wind is picked up here for Lag Force. He has Sound Barrier. Barely Blake gets heel. it. But there's no way he gets out of here. He even tried shooting the nuke so he didn't give it to Lag Force, but not in time. I feel like this is going to be a huge mistake going into the blink kill for the members of Lag Force. Not having a disengage for such a death ball -y snowball composition that once they see the Bloodlust, I mean, you don't, don't even, you even have bile. bile. Yeah, you have no disengage other than Entomb. Cattle is going to use the hunt. Whoa. Recall was used. He ends up going down. Members of Lag Force here getting a little flashy. <laughs> that was awesome. Isolation for Dahaka. No adaptation, even though he is sort of the primary warrior in play. Still waiting for Tassadar. Do you have a preference of 
Archon I, or Archon would give more damage. Definitely Force, force wall. wall, though, would help with the disengage. I, and I, engage. I actually feel like the only way they get away from these fights is if Leoric uses his entomb sideways. Yeah, and as then a you, Force Wall already. And then you Force Wall <laughs> with it. I was thinking about that, I, too. I'm, on, I'm not kidding. Like, I genuinely, like, if I was playing this game right now, I might be going, guys, if we are afraid of this Bloodlust, and I think that it is respectable enough for Rogue Choice, I want us to entomb Force Wall every time we see that. We call that the wall. We will build the wall. And a tomb was used, so was Gorge. But unfortunately, not in a way that they could kill Fury. He didn't even have to use his isolation or the adaptation he didn't get this game. One nuke remaining. All of the forts still up. No mule available to either side. So we don't have to worry about that. The players don't have to worry about that. The focus of the top four for Lack Force continues as we see almost securing it, and that's always got to be the concentration because of the boss. I mean, importantly, we're 8 minutes, 30 seconds into this game, and we haven't seen a boss, Oh, Dress. man. A whole new era for North America, Warhead Junction. Tomster's under a under his own fort in a bad spot, but not enough minions killed, and the collapse from Lag Force is going to be real. Biggie is on his own, though, as we see Leon join back in. Hook Gorge attempt could be... But it looks like they're comfortable. They do pick up the 13 talent tiers, though, so we'll see if Black Force maybe wants to get aggressive with that. They all got pulled down to the bottom, even though the top boss now would be the optimal position. Ah, oh, we're going for the fight. Biggie goes in, saw him the target. Peekaboo revealing the location of Tempo Storm. Hook. Force Wall was there just in case, and it was Force Wall. This whole time. Fury has been in the top lane pushing that. That fort's just about to go down. But Leoric keeps it alive a little bit longer. Collapse from the members of Lag Force on bottom. They get a dismount. June's there with a boop, though. That's enough, dude. The Lag Force does not have an initiation warrior. They've got a hook, and they've got an entomb, and they've got a tracer. And really, all of this is on big impact to be the one opening up those fights. And he's doing his best. But Tempo Storm understand the situation. They're just kind of walking away from it. Dude, look at the structures. Lag Force has put on enough pressure that they are now even in the forts taken. But the other two are within inches of falling. That could give a pretty big spike to Lag Force. But there are warheads to deal with in 10 seconds. Top and bottom way far across. Illidan should be OK unless Pulse Bomb's immediately used in Polymorph. It's both there. Good night. Cattle. I thought for a moment, I didn't see all the, the pieces adding up. Then we saw that wild bright wing from below. We see the tracer come down from above. Lag Force, they've got it under control here. Psalm being chased down by the ghost and of B-Kid past. No entomb, though. Force wall. Big impact's going to be here. He does not have a pulse bomb yet. He bright goes in. Shifts in. Psalm is down. Sound barrier can't save him in time. Hook brings back in June. All right. The nukes were dealt with, one apiece. The bigger news is without Rhaegar for 24 seconds, Lag Force have a man advantage. And they are looking at a tasty boss in the top lane. That force is very close to falling. So I'm starting to understand a little bit of the thought process that Temple Storm kind of went through through this draft as this game's unfolding. And I feel like a lot of it was due to the task tracer pressure applied to the Rhaegar and not wanting him to get one shot and not being able to ancestral himself. So going into the secondary support, and it just conveniently worked that everybody else is good auto attackers. They can death ball. Lucio synergizes with high mobility. You know, you might as well put him on a composition that you're going to death ball in as well. But that way, he has enough supporting to make sure Rhaegar is not going to get one shot by these pulse bombs. But there were better supports to stop the pulse bomb problem, but that didn't accent the team fight across the board. And now it's whether or not that is going to be too much of a loss of a resource for the team fight or the laning situation for Lag Force to be able to, or for Temple Storm to be able to control this game. So what you're saying is Sound Barrier was taken because to deal with the pulse bomb to, pressure. To make sure Rhaegar is not a dead dog all over and over and over again, but there were better supports to make up for that. Yeah. So they decided that they wanted team fight synergy over survivability of the core problem. And right now, it's honestly not looking too hot. Lag Force is rather in control of this game, but more importantly, they aren't necessarily getting the picks in the manner you would assume right. they would. So it's just the lack of pressure of tempo. And then now Lag Force, because they do have a reasonably offensive composition, things are slightly working out. Well, to be fair, though, we have seen inklings of trying to make that happen. Sound barriers that just barely missed keeping Rhaegars alive. Yeah. 
All we have to do is make sure that Rhaegar doesn't get caught out, and then June is not far behind and can immediately use Sound Barrier so that the shielding is there to keep Sam alive. But honestly, if it's a full team fight, we also haven't really seen a full team fight anywhere either. Lag Force seems to kind of just be everywhere and pulling apart Tempo Storm and finding an opening for them to catch someone out. They're trying to make that happen on bottom, but with that Wraith walk away from B Kid, they were unable to find the sneaky fury in the shrub. Bloodlust hasn't even been used, but Lag Force do have to be very careful about Bloodlust if they if their core ends up going down or, or getting open, then with a couple of nukes and bloodlust, Tempo boss. Storm can bring that down super fast. And already Tempo are opening that up. They have both top and bottom forts down. So the next boss rotation very likely will be the last somewhere. Psalm not confident to move up and get that interrupt. So Warhead number one picked up, as you see down below, Tomster. Warhead two. Fury wants to stop that with that brush dock. Hook not going to land. Illidan is yet to join the fight, but he does have the hunt. He's going to use that. He goes on to Leon Black. That's the focus for Tempo Storm. They silence, isolation, everything used, but they did not get the kill. Everything is fine for Lag Force, but they don't really have a fort to retreat to. Biggie uses the Pulse Bomb, but this time Sound Barrier keeps June alive. And now, much like the case we were talking about earlier today, the second rotation, that the Bloodlust. Wall. Oh man, that Force Wall, but the Bloodlust still is giving that time of trying to use the auto attack to heal up, but Lock Force had way too much damage going on. They've already gotten two. Now B Kid's chasing down both June and Fury. Fury is way close to being brought down with the Polymorph slowing him down. A nice boop from June. Backs lag force off, but now the slow is hitting Cawthon. And the lingering apparition is going to allow B Kid to lock in the third kill for lag force here. With the three warheads, one and two are going to be dropped into this mid or bottom keep. Excuse me, only use, one. Somehow and they're going back to get too. Bright Wing. So Bright Wing's going to have another one. Is that Jeff game? Phase shift coming in. There's three. There's three warheads. 23 seconds for Greymane. One dropped on the core. One is going to be dropped. Second. But Dahaka is stopping Brightwing. They have no ability to get the secondary warhead there. She's oh, not going to no. make it back. 60%. Can they stop this? Can they do it? Lag Force is trying to make it happen. 30% and counting. Leon 25, Black. 20, 10. 10. They're going to do it. They're going to take out Tempo Storm in game two. And game four. We are going to game number five here, ladies and gentlemen. Game two for Lag Force to win. Game five, though, everybody, we knew it. We knew it could be a possibility. Psalm said it could be a possibility every time they go up against this team. Lag Force gets a breath of fresh air. They get new momentum versus Tempo Storm, and now they're one game away from reverse sweeping Tempo Storm. I feel like a lot of that came down to what it took me a while to figure out. It took me a while to do the math on the draft, and like, so why was the thought process Lucio of all the supports in this area? And I feel like that final fight, same situation happened. Pulse Bomb forced the sound barrier. It's just not a good anti-Pulse Bomb spell. It is not worth the cooldown. Tracer can easily pull away from that. And you saw it. That's what they did. They reinitiate. Lust goes down. And they're like, well, we don't care. You have no sound barrier to be able to take this fight. So they end up winning it. It's just both of those are not reasonable to use on a short cooldown like Pulse Bomb. You and know, honestly... Like there was only one time that they even got the opportunity to use all yeah. of those heroic abilities. Uh, Lag Force played that battleground really well. They ran around with whoever they had to try to get those picks. It was just enough picks to make sure that they caught up with the nukes, with the bosses. They started taking down structures. Lag Force gets a win on Warhead Junction over Tempo. I think the biggest thing going to game number five is if you are a Lag Force fan and you want this upset to actually go down, you are begging Temple Storm to not choose Tomb of the Spider Queen. If Tomb of the Spider Queen is the map with the lack of macro pressure that they have failed to be able to present, granted, it's not like Temple Storms look too hot in the last two games whenever the win condition has, is as clear, but Lag Force has not made much happen in laning phase. It's the last laning map to exist within the pools considering the bans. If Tempo picks that up, I'm like already a huge setback for Lag Force, even with the momentum they're riding. Well, let's get to the break, and when we come back, we'll see which battleground